Any class that extends the thread class can be run as a separate thread. A thread is the execution of a separate program, and they often use some of the same code, even the same data as an existing program that's already running. One program can spawn any number of threads. Here's a program that has its usual thread of execution beginning with the main method and it starts two other threads from there. A thread is started by the creation of a new timed window object and a call then being made to the start method of that object. Here a second thread is started with another timed window object being created and its start method being called. Notice that the first timed window is created with a value of 10 and the second with a value of 3. Here is the definition of the timed window class. It extends the thread class and that's what makes it possible to be run as a separate thread. Now the constructor stores the value it receives in the variable named delay. It's going to be used as a one second delay in the loop of the program while it's running. Here is the run method. This is the heart of the matter. To extend the thread class it is necessary to implement the run method. This is what makes its thread work. You see when the start method of the thread object is called, it creates a new thread of execution and immediately returns to its caller. But that new thread of execution calls this run method, and the new thread will continue to exist until the run method returns. Once the run method returns, the thread goes out of existence. So everything that you're going to do has to be done in the run method and in the method calls by the run method. In this example, there is a loop that never ends. At the top of the run method, a text window is constructed. Inside the loop, a line of text is displayed that includes the delay time in seconds. The thread class has a sleep method that can be called to put the thread to sleep for a number of milliseconds. In this program, the delay is set as a number of seconds, so it's necessary to multiply it by a thousand to get the number of milliseconds. It's also necessary to put the sleep method call in a try block because it throws an interrupted exception. If the program receives an interruption, such as a control C from the keyboard, while it is sleeping, the interrupt will be thrown. Notice that this method simply prints a line to that effect and returns from the run method. This effectively halts the execution of the thread. And that's all there is to create and run a thread. The Java Virtual Machine does most of the work, calls from inside the thread object do the actual thread creation, and then the run method is called by that new thread. All you have to do in your program is write the stuff in the run method that you want the program to do. When the program runs, you see a text window with one line of text displayed. As you can see, the line of text is on a three second delay. Now the text window class is written so it displays a window in the same place and the same size every time. So the second thread appeared directly behind the first. As you can see, the two threads are running each at its own pace. But this is not the only way to create a thread. I'll show you another way in the next lesson.